Hi guys, it's Kai and welcome back to my channel. Do you suffer from chronically flat hair? Have you ever put on a wig and just burst into tears because it was so flat? Thank God you came across this video because I wanted to show you guys how to stack two wigs together um, if you've ever just found that one is not enough. I've done videos in the past on how to tease your wigs to get more volume and stacking is just gonna be something that um, takes that to the next level. So this video is sponsored by Weekend Wigs and we're using two synthetic lace front wigs. Um, they're a little bit shorter, they come down to about here. Um, you want something that when straight comes down past your shoulders. That way when you curl it and tease it, it's gonna give you this nice circle. I'm into it and this hair is huge. Here is what it looks like from the back just a huge helmet of hair. I could just stare into this mirror for so long. Oof. Anyway, we're gonna jump right into the tutorial. <laughs> so this video is sponsored by Weekend Wigs and they mainly sell synthetic lace front wigs. And this is a short platinum blonde one. I mean, she's cute or whatever. And for a short wig like this, it's actually got quite a lot of density. There's a lot of hair in this. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna curl it. If your two wigs are already curly with sort of the same curl pattern, then you could skip this step and just work with the curl pattern that's already built into the wigs. But if the goal is really to maximize volume and have that hair hitting the ceiling, then I really think curls give you a lot more volume. All right, I put the hair up in rollers. It really is a breeze when you're working with short hair. I don't know why I don't do this more often. Um, it's just so much easier to brush through and to style. So I'm gonna cover it with a plastic bag and then put her under steam. You know, I'm starting to think I need to send Leo's textiles an invoice for how much free promo I'm giving them in these videos. I always say I just leave it on until I really feel that hair is really hot and damp from the outside all over, but I never give it any specific time. I, I'd say like three to five minutes. For a shorter wig like this, there's not as much hair in each roller, so the steam will really penetrate through, so it doesn't need that much time. And then I always say to just um, let it dry overnight, but today, if you're in a rush, you can also just put a blow dryer underneath this bag and stick it in there for about five minutes until the hair is dry. All right, now that it seems dry, we can take out these rollers and we've got some beautiful curls now. Right, so here's where we are now and the wig is already looking much more voluminous with all these curls in it. You know some cooking shows where they're like, all right, put your cake in the oven and wait for one hour, but we don't have to wait for one hour because I already did one earlier. So this is our second wig that we're gonna stack on top. It's the exact same wig as this one. I did the exact same thing to it. I just curled it. Haven't done any teasing yet. If you want your second wig, the one that's gonna go on top to be a seamless match, ideally it should be the same color and the same cut. So ideally it's the same exact wig. Since this is a lace front wig, I'm gonna cut the lace off this top one. I mean, I'm gonna cut, cut the lace off of the bottom one too, but if you keep the lace on the top one, then it's just something unnecessary that's gonna be visible. So cut it as close as you can to the hairline. So I'm also gonna cut off these elastic bands because it's just unnecessary to keep them on when you're stacking this on top and we have no need for them. So away we go. Right, so now this is ready to stack on top. So this we're gonna say is our base wig. I'm gonna section off the front hair. So this is about two to three inches of hair from the front that I've sectioned off so I can just hide the seam up there. Before I stack on my top wig, I'm gonna do a little bit of teasing right in this area right here because our top wig is gonna sit right on here but as of now, this is super flat and in order to get really, really um, maximum volume, I want to add some volume right here so it puts the top wig on a platform. You can also get that effect by adding some sort of filler right here to bump it up. And maybe we can try out a combination of that. So I am taking some of this hair that's right behind this line of separation that we created. And I'm doing a little bit of back combing. Now this back combing, um, we have no intention of smoothing this out. So it can be pretty rough. It doesn't really need to be super neat. The idea is we're creating that base, that foundation for the top wig to sit on. So 
So I've just teased this top section of hair. So this is what our top wig is gonna sit on. And let me just give it a couple of spritz of hairspray. So now let's take our top wig and encapsulate all that teasing and lay the hairline of the top wig on this little seam, that little line of separation that we've, where we've just sectioned off the front hair. And I'm gonna anchor it in with some of these large pins. Just to see a little bit better, I'm gonna clip a bunch of the hair back on my top wig. So this is the lace front of the top wig. And then I can lift it up. Here's that teasing we just created and here's the back of the top wig. If I really wanna be greedy, I'll add some sort of filler. Plastic bags. This is just some stuffing paper that came with the wigs in the package. And I'll push that in there. I've talked about this before and in other videos I've used zip ties to secure this down which is a really good secure rod for you but today I'm going to show you guys how to do a needle and thread which is a little bit more seamless. This is some hair thread weaving thread from the beauty supply store. You can get this in brown or black and I'm using a curved needle which is really good for working with a mannequin head because it curves right back up. To you so it just saves a lot of time and you want to give yourself as much thread after you thread the needle um, just as much as your arm goes out so you're not like running back and forth to the wig block I want to pierce my curved needle into my bottom wig and up through even the lace of my top wig so this is the end of the thread and there's a knot right there so I'm gonna loop my needle into that hole so that when I pull it is automatically tied down and then I'm gonna go around the wig again about an inch to its right again piercing the needle through the bottom wig up through the lace of the top wig and loop and pull it's called a blanket stitch which I've talked about in previous videos you just loop the needle through the thread and then pull like that it's important that you get it through the fabric of the wig on the bottom and on the top don't just loop it through the hair because the hair is not something that you can pierce the needle through, right? You have to pierce it through the fabric of the wig. This accomplishes two things. Number one, it secures the top wig onto the bottom wig. But what this does that, you know, bobby pins and even zip ties can't really promise is this gives you total 360 degree um, security of the top wig down so it's fully enclosing the bump that's underneath it. There's a little bit of teasing that's spilling outside from underneath the top wig. Really want to push that underneath it. You can end your stitch by looping the thread around the needle a couple times. Hold it in place with your fingers at the base and then pull the needle through and that is going to create a knot. So now what have we just done? We've fully encapsulated that stuffing of paper and the teasing underneath the top wig so it can never come undone. All right, now look at all of the volume that we've got on this wig without even doing any backcombing at all to it, right? We only did that little bit of backcombing that's underneath the top wig, but you didn't even have to do that because you could just fill that with so much stuffing. So this is a great tutorial for those of you guys who are really uncomfortable with teasing. You really don't want to um, do that or maybe you've tried and you just can't get the hang of smoothing it out. This is a method of getting really huge hair with just stacking. You can imagine the possibilities once we've teased it up or even the possibilities when you want to stack more wigs on top or longer wigs. So I'm going to do a little bit of teasing to this. I'm not really going to go in too much detail around my method of teasing because I've already done a very detailed video about that which you can go check out. Um, but the secret to a great tease is to use your pinky finger.
Woo! Okay, that was quite the workout. I am gonna deal with these last few pieces of hair um, later on, but I'm gonna start to smooth her out. Right, let's kind of do a little bit of a swoopy bang moment and start to guide her over this way. Mostly just brushing out the front because the way the back is with all those messy curls, I kind of, I'm actually into that look. So I just want to really smooth out the front portion so this part is not so ratty. Right, so after I've smoothed that out, I'm gonna lock it in with hairspray, but first I'll put these clips in. You can smooth out the ends if you want, just by brushing them. And don't brush through it like that, right? Just brush it gently and softly and the hair will respond gently and softly. Just take these out and sort of secure this a little bit better with some hairspray. To get this to really lay nice and flat, the trick is to spray and then really brush it back. And with my hand there, I'm gonna smooth the end. See how that is nice and flat? <clears throat> Secure that with a blow dryer. And because this is short hair, it can really stand up and you can really get lots of height out of it. It's not going to fight as much as long hair would. Right, now I'm going to tease up these last sections of hair. Then once that is nice and stiff, you can just secure it down with a couple of clips only to give you enough um, leeway to deal with the ends like that. All right, I'm loving the way this has turned out. I've ended up styling her to be a lot more tame than what we had earlier, but as you saw, um, this hair gets really um, huge and wild. Let me just go put on some makeup and a cute little outfit and show you what it looks like on. All right, you guys, this is how the look turned out. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video and that you liked it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I can't stay long. I actually have to head back to the Palliative Care Center. But before I go, let me give a quick shout out to some of these people who've been tagging me in their Instagram posts for some tutorials of mine that they've recreated. If you're gonna recreate anything from my channel, please tag me just because I would love to see. But until I see you guys next time, I hope you're all doing well. Bye.